Ow! Hi, I'm Paul, and this is The Golf Show. Hi everyone, I'm Paul Hemlin. Welcome to The Golf Show. On The Golf Show this week, I'm going to investigate why some golfers get to a certain level but then can never seem to get any better, regardless of buying new equipment or having a bunch of lessons. And I think one of the main reasons for that is physical limitations. So I'm here today to have a TPI screening assessment with head PGA Pro Guy Wills. TPI stands for Titleist Performance Institute. This is something that's existed since 2003. Titleist have worked with thousands of golfers from tour pros to weekend enthusiasts to look at the way they swing the club. Physical limitations are something that perhaps you don't often think about when you're playing golf, but it can really hamper your swing if you're not swinging the club in the most efficient manner. But it can also lead to injury if you're doing something wrong and you're repeatedly doing it in the course of a round over the course of a year. So I'm going to have the assessment today. I think there's a, a dozen or so exercises guys are going to get me doing. I'll get a dashboard score where I'll be red, yellow or green. Yes, most likely red, I guess, on a lot of these things. And then Guy can work out a plan for me. That plan might mean some lessons and change the way I swing the club around my body. It might mean I need some physio. It might mean I need to start going for runs and stuff like that more often to get a bit fitter. So it's going to be really interesting to see if we can do this and if it can help my golf. I'd like to say thank you to our existing viewers and subscribers. The golf show is growing each week and I'm really enjoying it. If you are new to this channel and you've just found us, you're very welcome. Hope you enjoy it. Please click on that subscription button. Subscription is free. All it's going to do is tell you when our next video is available for you to watch. Okay, that's more than enough from me. Let's get on with the golf show. Okay, so I'm now in Guy Will's fantastic swing centre at Fulford Golf Club. Let's ask Guy about what TPI is and how it can help me. So the whole idea really is to find out why some players struggle maybe when they're having tuition to, to, to see any benefits. Um, and kind of working with a lot of the uh, leading professionals, not just in the golf industry, but in the medical background, it's really trying to correlate what a golfer can do and what they, what they can't do physically. Um, so if you have some physical limitations, that's really going to you know, have an input into what you can and can't do in your golf swing. So for us as a golf teacher, if I don't know that, then I, I seriously can't put a plan together that's going to work efficiently. So the, the whole ethos really is to work out, does the golfer have any limitations to what we can and can and can't do? And then if we can't do anything, then we build a swing around that. Uh, so it really is kind of uh, going into detail. There's so many different ways to swing a golf club and what TPI, again, they will say is there's thousands of different ways to do the same thing. Um, but there's one way that suits each individual player. Uh, you know, 25 of the top 30 players in the world have all been advised by a TPI expert. 18 of the last 20 major champions have all been using TPI and 47 of the top 50 uh, golf fitness professionals are TPI. So that kind of tells you something, that there's some background here that it really does work. So the screening involves really taking some brief history of what you've uh, medically got. So you might have broken your arm, you might have, I know you've had tennis elbow. The screening consists of 16 basic um, exercises that we're gonna do. Give us then this um, traffic light system, if you like, red bin, your worst uh, movement patterns all the way through to the amber and the green and then from there it'll take me time just to sort of work out what's the correlation between that and what you're doing in your golf swing. Obviously we've played hundreds of rounds of golf together, you know me very well, are you expecting to see a lot of green out there today? Um, there might be the odd one. <laughs> and just set yourself up, arms crossed that's perfect. That's going to be the first one. So you are neutral posture. So what is there I'm... any curvature in the upper back? So what we call a C posture, yep. or if you've got too much arch in your lower back, which will be an S posture. That's a, a pretty good posture there. So five iron posture, yep. and I want you to arch your back. Yep. Flat. Really feeling like the back is rotating under. That's it. So see if you can arch your back and flatten your back. Okay, so you can see, well I can see there how your body's moving, whereas I only want yeah. your hips to this move. This time I want you to not move your upper body, yeah. and I want you to, can you rotate your hips left and right? So again there, you're moving 
as your lower half. Same posture, so same starting point for these first four. And now keeping the hips still, yep. can you rotate the upper body without letting the lower body move? So this kind of what I'm trying to see here is the disassociation yeah. between the upper body and the lower body. So again, think about we keep those hips still, just moving the upper body. It's not a matter of how far, because yeah. obviously the further you go, the well, hips are going to come with you. Okay, now this is the big one. This is what we call it the overhead deep squat. So yeah. we might just have to, if you grab that white one, yeah. sanitized, ready to go. Yeah. That's our start position. Yeah. And the reason why we do that is we want the same position every time. So we don't want the hands out here. Yeah. We're starting with that kind of field goal, start up. And then from here, we're looking to deep squat, but keep the arms above your head. Yeah. If you come down and we lose the bar, for example, yeah. like that, that's a fail, okay? Yeah. Now this is the most common fail in golf. Straight down. Straight down, yep. As far as you can go. Okay, good job you got Lycra trousers on. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Like it. Okay, can you get back up? Yeah. Pretty good. I was impressed. Well done. It's saying are you sure that was correct? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so not quite at the bottom. Let's call that a limited toe touch. Yeah. So can you then go down to your left leg? Both yeah, both hands. Can you? Okay, I would say that's actually better on your right side looking at that. This is the 90-90 test. So what I'm trying to find here is if you get your right arm, we'll start with just doing one arm at a time, yeah. perfect. And from that position, how far can you rotate your forearm until you lose form. So what we don't want to do is you're cheating by using your back, for example. So I'm just going to come around this side. And so I'm not quite at 90 degrees there, where you, you got quite a bit further back. So you are at 90, but you're not ex yeah. you're not going past 90. Okay, that's fine. Let's do the same with the, the other arm. That's our start position. Lovely. Okay, good. Now we're going to repeat the same test, but yeah. we're going to do it from that posture position. So okay. get yourself into your five iron posture. Yeah. Let's start with the right arm there. up a little bit higher. There. Okay. And let's see if we see a difference. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So seriously limited there. Okay. So what we're seeing there is because we've got you in a posture and you said it yourself, I do spend a lot of time on the computer. Yeah. The more your upper body's rounded, if we just try this, this is a, a great one. If you really hunch your shoulders into yeah. a bad position yeah. and then try that exercise, you've, <laughs> you've, you've got no movement. Nothing there at all, is there? Because once you're in that yeah. position, you can't rotate. Yeah, yeah, it's I mean, interesting. It's not like that player is, is necessarily a bad golfer. No. Or he's not listened to his coach or however on, on swinging a club. He just, he just can't physically do it. Absolutely. I, I played at the weekend, and I think on the 15th, I hit my driver. And it was all, all hands, it was all hands, there was no turn, it was, and I actually said to the guys, and, and no offence to our older viewers, that's my swing of the future, that's what my swing's going to look like when I'm 70 years old. And you see some of the older guys, you know, who are struggling, and it's a bit handsy or, or whatever, and that's got to be, you know, older bodies, limitations and stuff, so yeah. this makes absolute sense as to why we, we need to think about this. Well, the other thing as well is it's not only finding a swing that's, Deficient for you as a player, whatever the age, it's trying to get the longevity out yeah. of you as a golfer. And that's another important point, isn't it? Because whilst we are assessing what my body can do and what it can't do, and the biometrics there to help me get a more efficient swing, and I think that's the, the, the phrase we've been using, it can also help me avoid injury. I'm guessing. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. You know, we can we can hopefully avoid injury. We can we can keep you playing golf for longer, yeah. and ultimately have more more fun. Yeah. Again, just something we could work on is, you know, finding out what's causing that. Is there something in the swing yeah. causing it? But also giving you better constructive pra practice yeah. plans. Yeah. Not just going out there for hours on end trying yeah. to hit golf balls yeah. and not really have a purpose. So the next one we're going to do, Paul, is is the single leg balance. So, okay. you know, golf swing has a lot of moving parts, yeah. but it also therefore has to have the right balance. Yeah. So the first thing we're going to do, and this is a really tough one, so I'm just going to show you first, is we're going to stand on one leg. Yeah. And this can cause issues in losing your balance. And I want you to put your, your other leg, your left leg, let's say in this case, at 90 degrees. Now, just getting that feeling of being in balance there. I've got my eyes open as well, by the way, and it probably can't see me with this mask on. But the test starts 
by closing your eyes. By what? Okay. Closing your eyes. Now, what we're not wanting, okay, this is this will be a fail, yeah. is when you start wobbling, yeah. aeroplaning, yeah. or losing your balance. Yeah. So it's how long can you stand there without falling over? You're going to catch me. I'm not going to catch you. I would have done last year, okay. pre-COVID. <laughs> uh, now I've got a nice clean floor for you to fall on. Yeah, okay, so, okay so just you choose which leg. Okay. Just start. Yeah. Once you get into that position. And ready, close your eyes. 1,000, 2,000. Okay, and stop. The aeroplane came quite early. <laughs> it's very, yeah, the pro, you know, it's, it's yeah. the receptors in your body, it's yeah. really hard once you shut the eyes. Yeah. So let's repeat just the opposite leg this time. Okay, and stop. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. What would be, um, so obviously Titus have done this with weekend enthusiasts, golf nuts like me, right through to tour pros. What would a tour pro, you know, somebody in the top 50 in the world, I did one second with one leg and maybe three seconds. We're looking at, expect to see? for us to get a green light here, i.e. The, the top players in the world, and it's not just top tour professionals, but we do look at those. Yeah. It'd be over 15 seconds. 15 seconds? Yeah. I'd have to have 10 goes. Well, this is what we're going to work out and find out what's causing it and can we improve it. Because if your balance isn't, isn't right and you're putting a 100 mile an hour swing with a driver and you're yeah. losing balance yeah. or you can't maintain posture, then, then it's going to have a massive really effect on, on there. So you're going to hold it with your weight. That's yeah. it. So arms out in front of you, thumbs up, keeping those arms straight. And can you get up to the wall? Right arm's up there, first second. Okay. So limited in the left. Oh, yeah, I think the right's up there. Little bit this is what we call a lower quarter rotation test. So obviously there's rotation yeah. both ways in your backswing and your yeah. downswing to, to start with. And we'll, you'll notice here we've just got Paul with his shoes off. This just gives us a better idea of what the shoe's doing okay. or what the foot's doing, I should say. Because yeah. uh, sometimes the, the shoe can kind of mask a few movements. Yeah. We're, we, we're not wanting the foot to start, start rolling around. Okay. So if we start with right foot and left foot on yeah. the toe, hands on your hips, yeah. and I want you to simulate a back swing. Okay, good. And then if we switch feet again, we're gonna go down swing. So can you rotate? Okay, good, very good. You get cramp. Okay. Oh, we're getting old. <laughs> Man down. Come on, Paul. No pain, no gain, Hemlin. Okay, other way. That's it. Left foot flat, right foot on the toe, and we're going down swing. So rotate. That's it. Okay, left side rotation is limited. Okay, so what I want you to do is to put your right foot over your left foot, that's it. And then we're gonna to rotate to your right as far as you can. Okay, good. So what I'm looking for here, that's better than you thought. The little cross on the floor really is giving me the indication. I'm looking for at least a 45 degree rotation, which I can see from my angle has definitely gone past that. So that's good. Now, if you switch the feet around, Okay, when you feel ready, bridge up so your, so your whole body is in a line. And then from there, how long can we hold it? Again, breathe. Again, there's no cramp, is there? No, that feels easier. This is a test, really, for one, all of those people who think you should keep your head still in the golf swing. I spent all of my day listening to people saying, I lifted my head up, I've got to keep my head down, and please, no. If the golf coach tells you that, run a mile. That because is guys, pet head. That it is. <laughs> that and keep your left arm straight, just yeah. forget it. The head does move in the swing. Yeah. Now, obviously, we don't want, as we've talked about, the posture changing. So yeah. if you swing and you change your posture, the head's going to move. Yeah. They're, they're attached at the end of the day. 
but we want to keep the posture position yeah. and rotate the body so the head does move. Yeah. So this is what we call the cervical test. Looking forward, rotate to your right and then down. Okay. Don't my shoulder counter, yeah, don't let the shoulder come up. Okay, and then back to centre. Cramps kicked in again. Yeah. A little bit of a limitation there yeah. with the shoulder hunching up. It's like yeah. that's trying to get you there. Yeah, cheap, and again, you might think, really, does the head need to move? Yeah. yeah. You know, what have, happens in, in the backswing is, you know, the head actually rotates that way in the backswing and then that way in the downswing. Right, okay. You think, yeah. there's, there's impact. Yeah. If you're keeping your head fixed, then there's going to be no mobile or no mobility. Okay. Out and in. Okay. Pretty good. Like that. Green. We got a green. Can you go up? Can you go down? What we don't want to do is to sort of cheat by using your thumbs and yeah. showing how far you go. But I'm using this this angle once again. Yeah, we're trying to create down movement. Good. So I'm looking for a, an angle there, and then an angle up. We've done all the 16 exercises. As Guy said, we've worked from posture right through to, to wrists and head and neck movement. It's become really clear in the sort of 15 minutes that's taken to me that a lot of golfers could be better or are probably better actual golfers than, than they are because their body's getting in the way. So these kind of things are, are really important. You can see what's hindering you, what you can work on physically and if you physically can't do it then you can get a coach like Guy to help you extend and up, down, and up. So I'm just looking for symmetrical movements there. If we've got, and this is where you'll see players where we say in the beginning, have you had any injuries? Yeah. If you've broken an arm, you might get one player who kind of can't do something yeah. with the arm that they've, they've broken, which that's going to affect the yeah. movement in, in the golf swing. You take a, a, a picture of Dustin Johnson, for example, yeah. who has a left hand at the top that looks like this. Yeah. I don't know what his history is. It yeah. could be that he's done something right, okay. as, a, as a child. I'm not 100% yeah. sure, but this is why everybody's different. Where we go from here is we're going to just take some quick video of your swing yeah. from down the line yeah. and from face on. And from there, yeah. try to correlate what we've just learned from, your, from yeah. your movements to see if the swing is actually matching up. Okay. And straight away, what uh, TPI is just showing me here yeah. is the, the swing characteristics from your screening yep. are, uh, are pretty much what I know is happening in your golf swing. This has brought you out with a golf fitness handicap of 24, which I'm sure is higher than your current handicap index. It is, yeah. That's interesting. So that would then indicate, because my handicap is eight, that my physical capabilities are, are stopping me from, from getting better than eight. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. So, you know, we, we're going to look through here why we've got the reds and we go yeah. through the the list yeah. of what we got right and you were wrong we did get some greens yeah, yeah. but we're really going to start to attack those reds what's yeah. what's that mean and the body swing connection very simply there is showing me what sort of things i would look for in your swing because this is what you're not capable of doing yeah. so loss of posture is one that i know you do so this is the kind of and yeah. the early extension, these are very much linked together. Yeah. Um, so from your screening, as it's saying here, based on the screen results, these are the likely moves that you're gonna make. Okay. And these are two that we've been working yeah. on. What we've got to now work on is what's caused the body to be like that. And yeah. can we, through the use of our chiropractor and our physio, improve these movements to improve your golf swing? You, you'll receive an email with all the those results on that's quickly been sent to you now and from there we can build a plan you go this way yeah, yeah. because the first test you you struggle to yeah. do that guy thank you very much for that that okay. took 15 minutes at the most no time at all it must be a relief for you to know that i have really been listening to you for those lessons all those years it's just my body's not letting me do absolutely. it absolutely and this is so, this is what we're finding yeah yeah you know it's not always that you haven't understood it it's there's a limitation yeah. in there and unless we can find out what the limitation is we're going to hit that brick wall yeah. so it's really advantageous now that we find 
or what we've found, yeah. can we go to the Cairo, can we use the physio, the personal trainer, and bring a body back that works the way we want to do. And if we can't, then we work around it. Yep. There's always a way around it. And I know you get people coming from all over for a TPI session. How can somebody book a session with you? Dead easy, just jump on the website, www.wheelsgolf.co.uk, and you can, you can book a TPI session there. We're linked up with our local um, personal trainers, so we can, we can do all packably. Yeah. I mean, I have a lot of people who come regular every month, and it might be something we would do every couple of months. Okay. It takes 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. Um, maybe today we've taken a little bit longer explaining yeah. things, but you, know, you take a player like a John Rahm, for example, who's big into his TPI, has one every week, wow. uh, every tournament. Uh, Thursday they start, but Tuesday and Wednesday is there. Quick 10 minutes, yeah. just to see. These guys are flying around, they're sitting yeah. on airplanes, they're in hire cars, they're not in their own bed every yeah. week. So things can change. So yeah. It might just need a, a little bit of manipulation yeah. to get that player active and right. get them. Get them. <laughs> Paul Hemming's golf swing to be continued. Thank you for watching The Golf Show. I hope you enjoyed the episode. To watch another episode, click here. To subscribe, click here.